Congratulations, gentlemen. Yeah, zero, zero. Yeah, zero, zero. Uh, yeah. We can jump into that one, curious. Okay, Bird, you winner. All right, thank you, Spectre. Okay, you got it. We're in a 169.1 by a 60.05. Okay, Bird, thank you, Spectre. Yeah, Bird, you winner. Go back to two. Zero, zero, enter. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay. It, it, it go to 37 and then two, though. 66, enter. Third. Six, six, enter. That's it. They got the flight plan. Well, we answered this. They're meteorites, aren't they? <laughs> I don't see a thing. Where are we? Looks like a big, looks like a big beach down there. Let me have a flight plan. Holy cow, it's completely blank here. Okay, give me one in. Do we got all the gimbal motors off on us? Yes, sir. Which ones are the craters? I'm going to have a lot of time looking. Let's get the cameras out. Okay, you want to stick those in, Jim? Okay. There we go, buddy. Aligned IMU arm rate. Okay. Arm rate, lunar power. Can I call a verb 83 here, Jim? Oh, you're with it. Huh? Yeah, you could do that. You're below 482 miles, whatever it is. Apollo Control, Houston, uh, now we're in our period of the longest wait uh, thus far in the mission. We're 19 minutes, 50 seconds away from acquisition at this time. During mission control simulations, uh, this uh, was a good time for coffee breaks uh, for, the, for the flight controllers, but that is not true today. Continuing to monitor, this is Apollo Control, Houston. Uh, this is Apollo Control, Houston, uh, 69 hours, uh, 15 minutes, and uh, now into the flight. Our display readings now show an altitude of 86 uh, nautical miles, a velocity reading of 83.55. Uh, this uh, last reading, assuming that we did not have a burn. Uh, our AOS at this time, uh, 16 minutes 40 seconds if for any reason uh, the service propulsion system engine did not burn uh, we would uh, see the spacecraft uh, perhaps 10 minutes uh, before a normal acquisition time so here in mission control continuing to monitor this is apollo control houston mission control center uh, cliff charlesworth uh, getting our correction there, Glenn Lunny, uh, we should say, uh, getting ready to talk to his flight control team. Our time of acquisition clock uh, now reading uh, 9 minutes 45 seconds and we're continuing to watch it. Meanwhile our top clock is counting forward, uh, now reading 25 seconds. The top clock uh, was used to denote an acquisition time if we had a no burn situation. But we will continue to monitor here in Mission Control Center. Apollo Control Houston, uh, just under four minutes away now uh, from our time of acquisition with Apollo 8. Apollo 8 uh, still out of range, uh, should be rolling uh, 180 degrees shortly, if not already, to establish S-band uh, high gain antenna communications uh, with the ground. We're standing by in mission control. This is Apollo Control Houston.
mark, uh, three minutes uh, from uh, predicted time of acquisition, standing by. Apollo Control, Houston, mark uh, two minutes from predicted time of acquisition. Apollo Control, Houston, mark uh, one minute from predicted time of acquisition. This is Apollo Control Houston. Uh, we have a crew report of an orbit of 60.5 nautical miles by 169 nautical miles. Standing by, continuing to monitor this is Apollo Control. Uh, Apollo 8, Houston, over. Houston, Apollo 8, over. Apollo 
Bravo 8, Houston, over. Uh, Apollo 8, Apollo 8, this is Houston, Houston, over. Roger, Houston, we're reading you loud and clear. Uh, Apollo 8, this is Houston, uh, reading you loud and clear now. Uh, verify your evaporator water control panel switch to the auto position, over. Roger, it is an auto. Roger. Roger. Uh, Burton status report as follows. Burn on time. Burn time, four minutes, six and a half seconds. VGX minus 1.4. Attitude nominal. No trim, VGY was zero, VGZ was plus point two, Delta VC was minus twenty point two. Orbit one six nine point one by six zero point five. Uh, Apollo eight Houston, Roger the burn on time. Burn time four zero six point five. VGX is minus 1.4. Apollo 8, Houston, uh, verify your evap water control on panel 382 is auto. Your evap out temperature is high. Over. Roger, standing by. Houston Apollo 8, uh, Roger. Primary evap is auto H2 flow auto. Do you recommend activating the secondary border baller? Uh, Roger, copy, stand by. It's Apollo Control, Houston. Uh the conversation taking place is with Bill Anders aboard space. This is Houston, uh, re-verify a manual valve on panel 382. Evaporator water control automatic, over. Roger, verify. Apollo 8, this is Houston. Uh, recommend you activate your secondary water evaporator. Secondary map coming on the line. Roger. Apollo Control Houston, uh, our ground data closely uh, coincides with that aboard the spacecraft. Off your DSC and we'll go to high bit rate, over. Roger. Uh, Apollo 8, this is Houston. I'll continue my readback of the burn status report. Copied VGX 0, VGY 0, VGZ 1.2. Delta V Charlie, minus 2.0.2, .2, over. Stand by, he's getting the chart out again. Delta GZ was point two. Roger, understand, point two on VGZ. Houston, this is Apollo 8. We're on now.
malfunction one and six. Going through step one to step two, over. Uh, Apollo 8, Houston, roger, copy. The correction, that's to step four. Uh, roger, copy to step four. Roger, step 13. Apollo Control Houston, uh, what you're hearing here is a checkout procedure of the environmental control system. The voice uh, principally from the spacecraft out of Bill Anders, uh, the uh, systems engineer, member of the team aboard. Uh, Houston, roger. Looks like the boiler dried out somewhere on the line. Uh, roger, Bill. Apollo Control, Houston, our ground readings on this orbit, uh, 168 uh, nautical miles and Apolloon, Paralloon of 60.4 nautical miles. Apollo 8, I'd like to confirm that burn status report. VGX was minus 1.4. VGY, zero. VGZ, 0.2. Minus 0.2, that is. Delta VC was minus 20.2. Uh, Apollo 8. Apogee 169.1. Apollo 8. 60.5. Uh, Apollo 8, this is Houston. Roger. I'll read back again. The burn was on time. Four minutes and six and a half seconds. BGX minus 1.4. Trim nominal. VGY zero. ZGZ minus 0 0.2. Delta V Charlie minus 20.2. Over. That's Roger. Uh, Roger, and we copy your apogee and perigee. Uh, steam pressure's coming up. Roger, Bill. Apollo Control, Houston, uh, so you've uh, had the first status report uh, from an Apollo crew in uh, lunar orbit. The unmanned lunar orbiter spacecraft uh, traversed the moon perhaps uh, over 10,000 times, but this is the first that a man aboard, in this case uh, Frank Borman, reported to his compatriots here on Earth. Roger, concur. Lap uh, dance coming down. Uh, Apollo 8, Houston, Roger, we concur. Roger, we're watching. Tell Kent, nice job on the malfunction procedures. Roger, Bill, thanks. You too. Call and you think we got to stop the uh, secondary boiler, Houston? Uh, Apollo 8, Houston, we'll call. Here's to the Apollo 8. Uh, Apollo 8, 
Houston, go. Roger, for information, we're passing over just to the side of the crater Langrenus at this time, going into the Sea of Fertility. Wait, Houston, Roger. As you heard, Apollo 8 uh, approaching the Sea of Fertility. Apollo Control Houston, our first uh, batch of uh, ground tracking data shows agreement uh, and velocity within one foot per second with that of the spacecraft. Uh, Apollo 8 Houston, uh, what does the old moon look like from 60 miles? Over. This is Houston. Uh, you can leave that secondary pump on for just a few minutes. Over. Right now. 
Our first initial point is uh, easily seen from our altitude. We're getting quite a bit of contrast as we appear as we approach the Terminator. speaker that you've heard during most of this discourse has been uh, Jim Lovell, but that uh, last voice was that of Bill Anders. We're uh, directly over our first initial point now for B-1. It's almost impossible to miss. Uh, very easy to pick out. And we can look right over into uh, the second initial point. Uh, Roger, Jim. Clearly, the five crater star formation, which we had on our uh, lunar chart. Uh, Roger. And right now, I'm trying to pick out uh, visually B1. Uh, Roger, Jim. Uh, Bill, you can turn off the secondary uh, EVAP pump now. Apollo 8, Houston, go. Roger, how about giving us a system status, please? Uh, Roger. Okay, I've got B-1 in sight now, Houston. The uh, reference to B-1 is a landmark, a uh, landmark which uh, relates to a projected landing site. It's very easy to spot, uh, entire rims of the craters from here uh, with, of course, the white uh, crescent on the far side with the sun is shining on it. The shadows are quite lengthy now. Maskin and B has quite a few shadows off of it, but can be recognized. Just to the west of Maskin and B, we start going to the Terminator. Uh, the Terminator is actually quite sharp over the Pyrenees, and uh, it's... Uh, I can't see anything in Earth shine at this present time. Bill says that he can see things out the side window since he's not looking down on the on sunshine on the air, on the moon. Apollo Control Houston, as a matter of interest, uh, spacecraft commander Frank Borman's heart rate uh, has been ranging between 78 and 80 since we acquired. Evaluating the strip charts on your FPS burn, and we'll give you a readout on that shortly. Over. Roger, thank you. It seems smooth. Uh, you need a high bit rate anymore? Uh, Roger, we like high bit rate. Uh, we have dumped your DSE, and we'd like to stick with high bit rate for a while. Roger. Well, we're just about over Mask and the B now, and our target is just directly below us.
This is Houston. Uh, if you want the recorder now, it's yours. Roger, thank you. Apollo Control Houston, our uh, tracking data from the ground still compares very well with the uh, guidance and navigation computer on the spacecraft. Uh, Apollo 8 Houston, uh, Miss Sin tracking is comparing very well with your onboard nav. Roger. Uh, Houston, uh, for your information, we lost uh, radio contact at the exact second you predicted. Uh, Roger, we concur. The uh, reference there was to loss of signal as they went uh, over the backside of the moon. Turn off the transmitters at that time. Honest engine, we didn't. While well, these other guys are all looking at the moon, I want to make sure we got a good SPS. So how about give me that report when you can? I uh, sure will, Frank. Roger, understand. Apollo 8, this is Houston. Uh, are you eating? Apollo 8, this is Houston. Are you eating dinner? Negative. We'll have breakfast in a little while here. Roger. Uh, Apollo 8, this is Houston. Uh, when you go into the dark uh, in about uh, seven or eight minutes, I have some words for you on the uh, filters for the wide-angle lens for your TV camera. Over. Roger, let me know when you're ready to copy. Uh, Apollo 8, Houston, uh, any words on Earth shine? Over. Apollo Control Houston, uh, as Apollo 8 uh, passes over uh, the uh, night portion of the moon, uh, the uh, guidance and navigation platform is to be aligned. Uh, this uh, during periods of darkness, uh, since the spacecraft remains in an inertially fixed at attitude uh, for this procedure. This leaves lunar daylight uh, periods for maneuverability needed uh, for photography and uh, visual observations. At uh, 70 hours, uh, 12 minutes, continuing to monitor. This is Apollo Control, Houston. Go ahead with the information on the filters, Houston. Uh, Apollo 8, Houston, roger. 
Uh, we recommend uh, you use a wide angle lens on this particular uh, TV run. You can use the telephoto lens with the same setup as uh, yesterday's TV show. However, we recommend a wide angle lens. Uh, step number one, tape the single red filter to the red filter on the red-blue filter holder. Do it so that the filter slide still functions, over. Go ahead. Roger, step number two. Attach the filter holder to the lens with tape on uh, the top and bottom. Do this with a slide forward, over. Go ahead. Uh, Roger, then uh, at the end of your second rev TV pass, or on request from here, we'd like you to remove that red filter from the holder and transmit briefly with it that way. Then slide it over to the blue side for your final transmission. Over. We got you. Okay, Frank. Houston Apollo 8 standing by to record TEI 1 and TEI 2. Uh, Apollo 8, this is Houston. Your TEI 1 and 2 pads uh, you received last pass are still good. Uh, using these pads, your next mid-course would be less than 20 feet per second. Over. Roger, understand. Uh, Apollo 8, Houston, uh, we have all the uh, STS experts looking at your data now. The preliminary look uh, is very good, and we'll give you some final words later. Roger, we could feel the chuck when we threw in bank B. Not a chuck, but we could feel the additional uh, thrust. Uh, Roger, copy. Uh, Houston, be advised uh, on this uh, red-blue filler technique on the TV that you cannot uh, slide the two fillers out of the way with them taped onto the TV camera, so I suggest we do red, blue, and then take them off. Uh, Roger, we concur, but uh, make sure that the little red filter is taped over the big one. Over. You don't want the red fill, you want the blue by itself, is that correct? Uh, that's affirmative, Bill. Uh, Bill, we'd like you to use the double red filter for the first transmission, over. Roger, in work. Apollo 8, Houston. Go ahead, Houston, Apollo 8. Uh, Apollo 8, this is Houston. If you should decide that you want to roll heads up on Rev 2, uh, one thing to remember, be sure you yaw 45 degrees right in order to maintain your high gain antenna calm, over. We will not do that. We're going to stick with the flight plan and make the best we can here. Roger, Frank. As usual, in the real world, the flight plan looks uh, a lot fuller than it did in uh, Florida. Roger, understand. Apollo Control, Houston, uh, a period of relative quiet. Uh, perhaps the uh, crew has uh, decided to start their first meal in lunar orbit.
Apollo Control, Houston. Uh, we're now less than uh, 30 minutes away from our LOS time uh, on this, the first revolution in lunar orbit. Continuing to monitor, uh, this is Apollo Control, Houston. Uh, Apollo 8, Houston, uh, we need an O2 purge now. Roger, and we're standing by for a map update. Roger. Uh, Houston, Apollo 8, uh, just for information, after we completed B-52, I've acquired the Earth and the Sextant. It's quite a sight from here. Uh, Roger, I bet it is. They're still working, Frank. Another five or ten minutes. Roger. Uh, Apollo 8, Houston, uh, your SPS data is looking real good. It's just a matter of getting it all in from uh, the site and getting it looked at. So far, everything looks copacetic. Apollo Control, Houston. Uh, we've uh, just received data from uh, our flight surgeon that uh, Frank Borman's uh, peak heart rate at uh, LOI-1 read 130, uh, the same reading that he had, as a matter of fact, at liftoff. Thought we would pass that along, uh, continuing to monitor this Apollo control. Uh, Apollo 8, Houston, uh, we'd like to take about uh, five minutes of high bit rate over. Roger, five minutes high bit rate, coming on. Roger. You got it. Apollo 8, Houston, with a map update. Stand by one. Go ahead with a map update. Uh, Roger, Frank. Uh, map update, Rev 1 slash 2, no change. Rev 2 slash 3 follows. 7-3. Zero four five seven seven three zero niner three seven seven three one niner zero one seven three four eight five three seven four two four two three remarks. Bravo one seven four one six two four. Over. Roger, copy. Roger, we show you twenty three minutes to LOS. Roger. And are you gonna dump the tape? This is Houston. You're go for Rev 2. All systems are go. Uh, SPS evaluation is still underway and looking good. Over. Understand. Go for Rev 2. 
Roger, thank you. Uh, Roger, Apollo 8. Uh, we're still using the tape recorder. Uh, we'll dump it in a little bit. Apollo Control Houston, uh, you just heard that go for Rev 2. Uh, Flight Director Glenn Lunny. Uh, Order is yours. You can go to low bit rate. Thank you. Flight Director Glenn Lunny uh, cross checked with his ECOM and uh, guidance and control officers and uh, told uh, our capsule communicator Jerry Carr to pass along that go for Rev 2. Uh, Apollo 8 Houston, request Biomed Switch Center, over. Three, two, one, mark. Roger, mark. Apollo 8, Houston, uh, put your telemetry input switch to low, over. Roger, go low. Houston, Apollo 8, we're in the process of preparing uh, meal for day, or correction, day for meal A. Uh, Roger, Frank. Houston, uh, Apollo 8, over. Uh, Apollo 8, Houston, go. Are you going to be able to dump that tape for the LOS? Uh, Roger, Bill, uh, they say they've already dumped the tape and it's almost uh, totally clean. You've got about two minutes of low bit rate on there, but uh, the rest is clean, over. The, the high bit rate of the burn wasn't on there? Uh, negative. Uh, we've already dumped and got that. Uh, that's affirmative, we did. Okay, thank you. Houston, uh, the voice quality on your tape was uh, just fair to middling. Uh, uh, we were able to monitor your burn and uh, hear most of that pretty well. All right, did you get a uh, report of the uh, photography accomplished or is that on the tape at present? Uh, negative, we haven't heard that. Okay, we'll put it on the tape now. Roger. That's Apollo Control, Houston, now less than five minutes away from a loss of signal on our first revolution. Uh, Apollo 8, Houston, uh, you're four minutes and 40 seconds from LOS. 
Uh, I would like a reconfirmation on your S-band aux switch in the down voice backup position, over. Uh, negative, it's in the normal voice. We'll go down voice backup. Uh, Roger, request you leave it there forever, over. This is Houston. All systems are go. You're still go for Rev 2. Over. Thank you. Houston, uh, 70 hours, uh, 56 minutes, and uh, now into the flight, uh, we've had LOS uh, with Apollo 8. At uh, this time, uh, we would like to uh, play back uh, those uh, historic first words of insertion into lunar orbit as we heard them here in Mission Control. Apollo 8, Houston, over. Apollo 8, this is Houston. Roger, 169.1 by 60.5. Good to hear your voice. Apollo Control, Houston. Now we'll switch uh, back and play back some of uh, Jim's, Jim Lovell's descriptions as he viewed uh, the lunar surface from uh, his orbital altitude. Uh, Apollo 8, Houston, uh, what does the old moon look like from 60 miles? Over. Okay, uh, Houston, the moon is essentially gray. <coughs> no color. Looks like plaster of Paris. Or uh, sort of a grayish beach sand. We can see quite a bit of detail. Uh, the sea of fertility doesn't stand out as well here as it does back on Earth. There's not as much contrast between that and the surrounding craters. 
Uh, the craters are all rounded off. There's quite a few of them. Some of them are newer. Many of them look like, uh, especially the round ones, look like uh, hit by meteorites or projectiles of some sort. Langridus is quite a huge crater. It's got a central cone to it. The walls of the crater are, are terraced, uh, about uh, six or seven different terraces on the way down. Uh, Roger, understand. And coming up now to see a fertility are the old friends Messier and Pickering that I liked about so much on Earth. Roger. And I can see the rays coming out of uh, Blade Pickering. We're coming up now near uh, our B-1 initial site, which I'm going to try and see. Uh, be advised, the round window, the hatch window is completely iced over and we cannot use it. Bill Meyer is showing a rendezvous window. Uh, Apollo 8 Houston, uh, Roger. Uh, got any more information on those rays? Over. Uh, Roger, the rays out of uh, Pickering are uh, quite faint from here. There, there are two different uh, groups coming to, uh, going to the west. Uh, they don't appear to be uh, have any depth to them at all. Just uh, rays coming out. Roger. It looks like just changes in uh, the color of the Mari. Yeah. Okay, over to my right are the uh, Pyrenees Mountains coming up. And uh, we're just about over uh, Messier and Pickering right now. Our first initial point is uh, easily seen from our altitude. We're getting quite a bit of contrast as we appear, as we approach the Terminator. Uh, the view appears to be uh, good, uh, no reflection of the sun back uh, to our eyes. It appears that uh, visibility at this particular spot uh, is excellent. It's very easy to pick out our first initial point. And over this mountain chain, uh, we can see the second initial point, the triangular mountain. Now we're coming up on the uh, craters Colombo and Gutenberg. Uh, very good uh, detail visible. We can see the long uh, parallel faults or grubbins. And they run uh, through the uh, Mario material right into the uh, highland material. We're uh, directly over our first initial point now for B1. It's almost impossible to miss, uh, very easy to pick out, and we can look right over into uh, the second initial point. Uh, Roger, Jim. I can see very clearly the five crater star formation which we had on our uh, lunar charts. Uh, Roger. And right now I'm trying to pick out uh, visually B1. Uh, this is Apollo Control Houston. As Apollo 8 uh, passed over uh, the lunar hill out of communications range, uh, we read an apolune of uh, 168.2 uh, nautical miles, a paralune of 60.3 nautical miles. The velocity of the spacecraft at that time uh, descending downward uh, from its apogee uh, was uh, 5224 uh, feet per second. Our current digital indications uh, say that uh, the present velocity is uh, 5297 feet per second. So at uh, 71 hours, uh, 2 minutes, 35 seconds into this most historic flight, uh, this is Apollo Control Houston.